This is a video about one of my favorite characters in the series. Uh, easily in my top five, I would say. And uh, I put this off as long as physically possible. I remember I came up with an idea for this video, like, probably close to a year ago. And uh, it's, it's not hard to see why. Um, let, let's, let, let's do a little bit of a, an association game here. Let's see if you guys can connect the dots from my way of thinking. Okay. Full bring arc ends. You know, Ichigo has his powers back. Status quo has been resolved. Rukia is the lieutenant. We see all the different Shinigami again. Execution is defeated. And now Kubo has come out and said we're moving on to the final arc of the series. Okay. I'm pumped. Who's the enemy going to be? Quincy's. Dude, I'm all for that! Quincy's? Aw, oh, man. Quincy's have always been one of my favorite aspects of Bleach. I remember fucking wetting my pants when Uryu first showed up. I mean, that was pretty cool. You know, he walks out of the shadows, pulls out the fucking bow, and just blows a hollow away from a freaking distance. All their weapons seem cool. The German motif I can get behind. And then... And then, you have that awesome moment after the Soul Society arc when, you know, Uryu doesn't have his powers and he's walking around and then all of a sudden, BOOM! Ryukin shows up and he pulls out this big-ass pentacle and he's like, I am the last Quincy. I'm like, AWESOME SAUCE! Okay! So, uh, I assumed, just, <laughs> my fucking stupid ass, I assumed that because the last arc was going to involve Quincy's heavily, and that the only two Quincy's we knew about in the series that were still alive at this point were Uryu and his father Ryukin. I made the assumption that they would play heavy roles in this arc. <laughs> and it didn't happen. It didn't happen for a, for a good, what was it, for like a good 60, maybe 50 chapters uh, into the series. We don't even get shit from Uryu. You know, Uryu finally shows up after the uh, flashback with Masaki, and we finally understand, oh, he joined the Vandenreich. But before that, I'm sitting there like, where the fuck is Uryu? Like, what, what is he doing? And then after Uryu shows, I'm like, all right, now we're finally getting on track. All right, so I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Ryukin to do something. I'm waiting for Ryukin to... Even if he was going to do just the same thing Ishin did, Ishin kind of confronted Ichigo and told him about the past with Misaki. Even if it was something like that where maybe Ryukin steps in and he explains the past with Yuha and uh, how his father, Soken, was involved. Or, you know, what happened to Katagiri and blah blah blah. Even if, if, if Ryukin took on that role, you know. Okay, whatever, it's something, you're giving me something to work with here, but it just never happened. And I'm like, I'm not going to make the video, because it, I'm going to make the video, I'm going to bitch for about an hour about how Ryukin's not in this fucking arc, it's bullshit! And then in like the next chapter, Ryukin's going to show up and do something really relevant, and I'll be like, ah, see, there, now I'm glad I, now I have to delete that video, because Tekken 101 cannot be wrong. I'm never wrong! Yeah, but, um, finally, okay, fucking finally, chapter 674 happens, and we see this panel at the end, Ryukin and Ishin arrive at the Varvelt, and, I mean, at this point, the most of the Schutzstaffen have been defeated, the only ones that are really left at this point are, uh, Gerald Valkyrie, and Yuha, pretty much, and I think Hashwalth was still in the, yeah, Hashwalth was still in the middle of the fight with Ryu, so I assumed at this point, like, alright, 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 Ryukin video incoming, Ryukin video incoming, I'm not gonna do it right now, I'm gonna wait and see what badassery Ishin and Ryukin are gonna bust out here, aw oh, man, it's gonna be great, Ryukin's gonna go and help Ryu fight Hashwalth, and, you know, Hashwalth's gonna go into his fucking holy form, and then Ryukin are gonna, and, 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 and Ryu are gonna have to team up, and they're gonna have to, like, you know, put their differences aside for the moment, moment and have like a cool father-son moment it's gonna be like that scene in the fucking cell games with goku and gohan like father-son kamehameha it's gonna be like father-son holy arrow it's gonna be the size of a fucking skyscraper that's gonna be cool and ishin oh man i bet ishin's gonna go and help ichigo because ichigo's gonna get beaten down by yuha and then you know his dad's gonna show up and like beat some sense into him I'm like all right ichigo we got this and then like twin gets a gaten shows <laughs> I, I know, I know, I, everyone knows what happens, but I like to think about what would happen and much, how much cooler it would be, so, uh, you know, you guys can maybe feel um, driven to go and write a fan fiction because I know right, ra right now the Bleach fandom is just kind of in this depression, you know, just kind of like in this melancholy of, 
Yeah, that'd be really cool teching if that did happen, but we all know it didn't. Hmm. Okay. Okay. That's not what happened. <laughs> Spoiler alert. If you haven't gotten to that point in the story yet, that's not what happened, okay? Ryukin. Get this. Ryukin. Sole purpose in this arc, outside of the flashback, and I'll get to that in a second. His sole purpose in this arc... The only thing Kubo could figure out for him to do was arrive at the Varvel to be a fucking UPS man. Hey, who are you? How you doing? I got, I busted out the Quincy outfit, the thing that, you know, I don't like being a Quincy, but I dusted off the old Quincy outfit for this one occasion just to break through the fucking dimensionary boundary into the Soul Palace. Now the Varvelt, to give you a little piece of silver that holds the key to defeating Yuha Bok that was never mentioned before up to this point. Here you go, buddy. Okay, Ishin, let's hit the bar. Yeah, like, oh, man. That's bad. That's really bad. You know what? You know what, Kubo? If you're pressed for time, that's fine. But do you understand how big of a fucking cock tease that is? That is a huge-ass fucking cock tease. You know what it would have made more sense at that point? At that point? You know what? Don't even include Ryukin at all at that point if that's all the shit you're gonna do with him. Ishin, Ishin's in the same boat here, but at least Ishin had the moment with Ichigo in this arc, you know? He had the moment where he, you know, met with Ichigo, and we actually had something from him. Um, you know, but, but you know, Ishin aside, you know, why would you even have Ryukin show up if that's the case? Have it right in, you know what? Do something like, I don't know, Hashwolf gets taken out by the Aswalan, and then Uryu remembers Ryukin talking about Soul Silver when he was, like, growing up, and then Ichi and then Uryu's like, oh, I'll take the Soul Silver, I'm oh, sorry, not Soul Silver, <laughs> not Soul Silver, Still Silver, sorry. Take the Still Silver out of... Hashwolf, and then I'll use that to defeat Yuha. Don't even include Ryukin showing up at all, because that's the biggest fucking cock tease ever. Okay. Well, the one thing that Ryukin sort of kind of did this arc, and I don't even want to count it, because this wasn't even in the present storyline. This was in the past. But, um... Yeah, there was a past arc revealed with Masaki and Ishin and how they met, and Ryukin was also a major character in that past arc, where we get to see, um... The Ishida family, we get to see Ryukin's mother. Uh, we don't see Soken, which is one of the things that... Yeah, keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. You know Soken Ishida, Ryu's grandfather, the one that taught him the art of the Quincy, and then passed on all of his immense Quincy power and the title of last Quincy, not to Uryu, but to Ryukin, because he entrusted that power to Ryukin over Uryu. The guy that did all that and had some sort of connection, deep-rooted connection with the, uh, the Stern Raider, he doesn't appear a single fucking time this entire arc. Not in flashbacks, not, like, as even a fucking silhouette, not in the present storyline, doesn't even show up. He is mentioned by other characters, that is all we fucking get from Soken. But that's not what we're talking- I could have just made this an Ishida family bitch sesh video, but whatever, I love Ryukin, so I'm just gonna go with him. Um, yeah, so, Ryukin shows up, and he's like, there's, the, there's supposed to be an arranged marriage between him and Masaki to, you know, keep the Quincy bloodlines pure, if you know what that means. Um, but, uh, yeah, you gotta keep the bloodlines pure, you know, Ryukin's not really for this, but he also understands, like, okay, well, the Quincy's are gonna die out, so we gotta do this for, you know, furthering Quincy kind. Um, you know, that, 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 that was the case for a little while. He, uh, and Katagiri, uh, that's his maid. They sort of have a relationship. They go and try to help Masaki when she's fighting Shiro. Uh, they get into the badass Reishi armor, which I know it's been like three years later and I'm still bitching about the Reishi armor. I want to know what the fucking Reishi armor was. You know, why don't you use it more often? Is it like Iron Man shit or what? I don't know, but, yeah, so they get into the Reishi armor. They don't do anything with that. And, uh... It, it eventually leads into a, just a massive clusterfuck when Masaki becomes afflicted by holo, uh, holification. She gets the hole in her chest. Uh, Ryukin goes and tries to save her. He doesn't know what the fuck to do. He's looking for his dad. Ishin shows up, and then they meet up with Ohara. And then 
at the Urahara shop, he explains everything, you know, that you have to hook up Misaki to, you have to connect her to uh, Ishin's soul in order to save her. And uh, you know what? It, it, it's more of a back... Ryukin is a major character, but honestly speaking, it's more of a backstory between Misaki and Ishin. And that's, that's, I'm okay with that because that's what the fans wanted. You know, I've wanted to know that too. Like, what the fuck up is with Misaki and Ishin? You know, we, this is before we even knew, you know, 100%. Well, we knew Misaki was a Quincy, but that's still, we wanted to know what that all was about. So, that flashback was more about Misaki and Ishin. Ryukin did appear, but he didn't really do anything that substantial. He didn't. He, he just showed up, gave his two cents. We got a little bit of insight into his personality, maybe to help him, you know, understand his relationship between Ishin and him, you know, how they became friends. Uh, we didn't get anything with his father. His mother was apparently attacked by a hollow at one point, bitch mom. But uh, we don't find out anything about that, of course. Um, and at the end of the day, he was really powerless to do anything to help Masaki, really. Uh, he, he didn't really do anything to help her. That was all on Ishin and Uohara. So Ryukin was pretty much just there because it wouldn't have made any sense for him not to be there, basically. Uh, oh, and to give a setup for Uryu's mother, Katagiri, which that did play a part into a later into the arc. But that's it. That's it. You know what? I could, you know what? I could sit here and, and just before, I didn't even, I didn't even write a list down or anything, but just sitting here, I could give you three ways that Ryukin could have been integral in this arc, you know? And I've already given two of them. Number one, he shows up with Ishin in the final battle and he helps Uryu defeat Hashwolf because let's be honest here, that fight didn't have a solid conclusion. Hashwolf got defeated by Yuha. That's how that went down. Hashwolf basically killed Uryu. He was going to. He was going to deliver the finishing blow. Uryu had no fucking hope. Hashwolf had more experience. Hashwolf's power is a little more refined. Maybe the antithesis might have helped there, but I think it's just a matter of Hashwolf's ability. He has more training with it. He, he knows how to use it better, and he was about to win. You know, uh, Ryu could have showed up there and then helped his son, and that would have been so fucking insightful because... You know, Ryukin and Yuryu have always had sort of like a, you know, a, a kind of a mixed bag of a relationship, you know. It's like they don't, they don't hate each other, but it's like they don't agree with each other's philosophies and, you know, and, you know plus Uryu's at that age, you know what it is, you know. It's hard to be a dad, you know, teenagers, you know, especially when your teenagers go and run off to join the Nazis. It's kind of hard to have family dinner after that shit, uh, but that's one way. The second way is a less... Uh, insightful thing where it's like less impactful scene, like not just a fight, but Ryukin maybe shows up and explains the past of Yuha. He really delves into that. It's it, it's like the Quincy folklore has been mentioned a few times. Like the the Quincys have this hymn or something in the past, and 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 maybe he explains about that. Maybe he talks about Sokin or or something like that. Um, you know the the last thing. Uh, even if Ryukin were to show up and fight against the Stern Ritter, maybe one of the Stern Ritters has... Because the Stern Ritter are aware of the Ishida family. When Ichigo fought against Quilhei, he mentions, Oh yeah, Quilhei, you're, those holy arrows, they're not that strong, but they pack a bigger punch than Uryu's does. And Quilhei is like, Huh, my arrow is not as strong? I mean, my arrow is stronger than Uryu Ishida's? No, that's not right. That, that's impossible. That, he, he didn't just say that's not right. He said that's flat out fucking impossible. Uryu's, Uryu's bow is, and potential is, is, is less than mine. No, he's way stronger than me. He's part of the Ishida family. So, yeah, um, maybe one of the Stern Ritters were to be aware of, like, maybe worked with Sokin at one point and went after Ryukin. Maybe there's a grudge. Maybe they even knew each other at one point. I don't know. Well, maybe not knowing Ryukin because whatever, but Sokin, most definitely. Um, there seemed to be more of a relevance with the Ishida family earlier on in the arc, but that didn't go anywhere. You know, Yuha... You, you know, you, Yuha, the whole reason he even recruited Uryu, I, I don't even fucking realize that now. I think it's been such a clusterfuck, you know? He was says, like, oh, I want to make you my successor. You're the last surviving Quincy. No, you're not! Ryukin, too! You, you know, Kubo, did you forget that moment? But I think that whole moment with U Yuha enlisting Uryu to become, you know, his successor. You know, you're going to be Jesus Christ to my God or whatever. That was all just... A uh, fucking plan to get him, you know, to, you know, go over to their side, but I don't even know why, you know, Yuha was trying to gather over to his side. I mean, maybe because he's the only Quincy that managed to evade him, his, his ass Wallen, nine years ago. 
Uh, maybe the only impure Quincy because Ryukin is a pure Quincy, but still Ryukin, Ryukin should play a bigger role in this. Yuha shouldn't just be like, yeah, Ryu, you're the one that's everything. Oh, Ryukin, you're a pure blood Quincy, receiver of Sokin's power. Fuck off. We don't care about you, but Ryu, yeah, he's the guy, you know, that I don't even get it. I don't even fucking get it. Why he even enlisted, uh, Ryu into his fold at this point. Ah, uh, but, um, yeah, those are three ways that Ryukin could have just, you know, been somewhat significant this arc. You know, he, you know, he doesn't have to be the main focus, you know, because, you know, I thought the main focus of this arc, at least on the protagonist side, was Uryu and Ichigo, you know? I thought that's what we were, we were going for here, you know? Quincy and, and Shinigami working together to take down the enemy. And yeah, I guess that is sort of kind of how it happened. You know, Uryu and Ichigo, it was because of their efforts that led, and Aizen's, that, de that led to defeat of Yuha, but in a really shitty way. Um... Yeah, and you know what? We don't even get to see the full extent of, of Ryu's power. We don't get, I mean, of, of, of uh, Ryukin's power. We don't get to see the full extent of Ishin's power either, for that matter. Uh, but at least we got to see something of what he could do. He went serious in a battle. He went into his Shikai Engetsu. He was using Getsuga Tenshos against Aizen. Oh, man, that fight against Aizen, that just brought up back so much fucking traumatic memories because let me tell you something. This was the most fucking disappointing shit, one of the most disappointing shits I've ever encountered in terms of, like, a Bleach spoiler, okay? So this was way back. This was way back in, like, the Day Aside arc, right? Okay, so I was in fucking high school when this shit was going on, but I remember this so fucking vividly. All right, so... Remember the chapter after Aizen gets to Karakura Town and he's kind of like terrorizing Ichigo's friends for a few chapters? You know, uh, Ichigo is training with Ishin and the Don guy. Uh, you know, Uohara and Yorichi have been defeated. All the captains have been defeated. There was a, a cliffhanger on a chapter where, you know, Kubo loves to do this. Like a mysterious foot appears on the battlefield. Kubo loves to do that shit. Like a shadowy figure emerges in the background. And, um, everyone was curious of who that foot could be, and, uh, I read a spoiler that week that said it was Ryukin. Ryukin shows up on the battlefield and fires an arrow the size of a car at fucking Aizen, and he holds down the Ford until Ichigo could arrive. Um, which, because, you know, that makes way more sense than, uh, you know, I you know, Aizen just randomly fucking chasing around Ichigo's friends for, like, a quarter of the fucking Deicide chapters or whatever. But no... It ended up being Don Kanonji! Mwahaha! <laughs> fuck you! I mean, not fuck Don Kanonji. I love Don Kanonji. Don Kanonji's fucking awesome. Could we get a spinoff series with Don Kanonji? I'd watch it. But, um, yeah, that, that was one of the biggest disappointing moments in my life, you know? So we never even get to see Ryukin's full power. We don't get to see what he could do. Um, you know, uh, let's still Volt Standig, you know, any special abilities he was capable of. You know, he was given the final power by Soken, you know, like here's, this is the remnants of Soken Ishida, the last Quincy, and he passed this title on to myself. You think a few badass powers might come with that title, but we get nothing. Ah, and here we are, and in the series, nothing, and it basically results in, you know, Ryukin being fucking FedEx. That's, he's like, there you go, still silver, uh, there'll be a sign here, okay, see you, Ryukin, see you, Ryu. see you, son. Good luck fighting uh, against that godly entity. We'll just be over here doing nothing. <sighs> Don't even get a cursory glimpse at the last chapter. I was pissed about that too for Ishin. In the last chapter of Bleach, we don't even get to see Ishin in the Kurosaki clinic just hanging out in the background. We don't get to see Ishin, we don't get to see Ryukin. Alright, well, I think I've rambled on long enough about this. <laughs> That's a good rant. You gotta get a good rant out in the morning too. Um, what do you guys think about Ryukin? His character, things he's done in the series, maybe he, you know, does he deserve a better role? Maybe Kubo didn't even want to do that. Maybe he's just like, I don't want to put him in a in a better role. His role is just to, like, to train Ryu, get his Quincy powers back, and then uh, that, that was it. That's all Ryukin was there for. That's that's all he was there for. I, I didn't expect him to do anything else. Uh, that's, that's pretty shitty, because I think he was a pretty cool character. This is one thing where I'm actually happy what the anime did. The anime had this really cool moment, uh, well, at least cool in the context of the anime, where during the Fullbringer arc after, it was the same chapter that Ryukin was, um, you know, treating Uryu at the hospital. You know, Uryu gets cut by Ginjo, and in that process, um, Ichigo's walking home that night, and where the fuck is it? Hold on. Uh, there it is. Okay, he, Ichigo's walking home that night, and he gets attacked by Tsukushima's, like, little lackey, and Ryukin is the one to show up and 
take him out with his bow and this is just like or like 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 get him to leave because of his power that's that's what he does it's just a brief moment it only lasts maybe like five minutes or whatever it's anime only but he gave us something more for ryukin and i'm internally grateful for that all right well thanks for watching everybody hope you enjoyed final chapter will be out august 31st so less than a week prep your tear ducts this will be Techie 101 signing out.